Hey there, welcome. I'm Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes a little bit of an auction I most recently worked up in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. It was called the Possible Dreams Auction and it was for a nonprofit called Martha's Vineyard Community Services. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, I just want to give you a heads up that right now I don't have a microphone other than the microphone built into the laptop on the road for the entire month. I didn't want to haul my microphone around, so the audio hopefully will be good enough to understand me, but it might not be as crisp and clear as it usually is. Now, let's talk a little bit about the background of this auction, because I think a lot of you are going to be able to see elements of what this nonprofit was facing in your own event and be able to relate to it in that way. So some background. Uh, the Martha's Vineyard Community Services is a nonprofit on Martha's Vineyard, which is an island off of the, the coast of Massachusetts. And they are serving individuals and families and the community at large, really, with um, human services and, and health services and educational services. And they started this auction in 1979. Shortly thereafter, Art Buckwald got involved. And for those of you that might be a bit younger than I am, Art Buckwald was a what do they call him? Um, not an essayist. He was uh, he he wrote a column, a columnist, um, humorist. He was a humorist, and he had his column was run in many different or major um, newspapers around the United States. He lived in Washington D.C. during the most of the year, but in the summertime, he and his wife had a home on Martha's Vineyard. And that is not all that unusual. Martha's Vineyard itself is one of those places that a lot of people up in the Northeast would go to for a vacation spot. It's not inexpensive and it's become much, much more expensive in recent years. It's an island. Um, it's, it's difficult to get to from that standpoint. You got to fly or there's a ferry and so forth. Um, and the interesting numbers behind it are that the full-time residents number about 15,000. But during the summer, it swells to 100,000 people. So most of the businesses there, the hotels, the restaurants, anybody, really, they're making their money in the summertime. And then it just completely becomes a different island after all of the tourists go home. So those of you that are in highly tourist areas, you might be able to relate to that. The islanders themselves who are there year round say it's hard to make a living. And because you have had a lot of people from the outside come in, it's difficult, if not impossible, to find affordable housing. So the people that are not in that celebrity status and so forth, it's tough for them. You have to be very creative and work a lot of jobs in order to make ends meet. And that's coming from the islanders themselves. So Martha's Vineyard Community Services has this unique role that they're playing in the community to serve full-time islanders, although many of the people who come to this auction are not necessarily full-time islanders. They might be people who have summer homes there or who believe in supporting the local community, even though they're not there for most of the year. So it's an interesting dynamic in, in that way. Um, so Art Buckwald had gotten involved with it. Uh, he was the auctioneer for many years. Um, he passed, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they've they've had other auctioneers as well, including some professional comedians and so forth. Um, but it just, the event itself, as events can do, had just kind of maybe lost its luster. It wasn't at its high point anymore. And they were looking for ways to rebuild the event um, to start you know, re-engaging donors, re-engaging guests and so forth. So this is really about you know pivoting that event so that it can, um, so that it can start to to go on that upward, that upward um, path again. And I, I got to believe that both the the community itself, the way I've described that, as well as where they are in their fundraising event cycle, might be where you are as well. So understanding that, then let's go ahead and kind of dive into this, and I'll show you some of the um, the the event from my perspective. Okay. When you go up to Winnetou Resort, which is where this is held on the grounds of Winnetou Resort, you pull into the parking lot on the right-hand side, and then over here on the left-hand side, you can see the registration tent. So you go over there, you get registered, and then if you look back over your left-hand shoulder, you will see this. 
three sections to the tent. The far right is where we have kind of uh, the welcome tent where we have volunteers standing in front of banners that tell the story of Martha's Vineyard Community Services. The middle section here is the silent auction and raffle sales. We've got the bars in there. And then over here on the far left-hand side is where we have the, the program itself. This is not a sit-down dinner auction. It is a uh, an afternoon function where you can have 400 to 700 people come to this. And then a subsection of this group is invited into the resort for dinner. So this is happening, you know, we'll say 3, 3.30, about 6.30 or so. And then some people, a few are going in for dinner, but this part is not providing a lot of food. It's primarily a bar, some light food, and that's pretty much it. The ticket price for this event is $25. So that kind of gives you a sense of how different this is compared to some other events as well. Let's kind of go into this small tent and see how that's set up. The banners, every one of these banners was talking about a different aspect of Martha's Vineyard Community Services programs. They had a volunteer standing in front of them to engage the guests. Remember, these guests are might, might not be full-time islanders. They don't know all the services being provided. I think it's always important to provide some mission elements in your event and educate. But in this case, it's really important because you've got people who, who may have no clue as to what the nonprofit is because they're just not around enough to know, right? So right in front of the, the banners, we had volunteers. Here's a couple of them close up. This is early childhood programs and their disability services. Let's go into the silent auction tent. And I'll give you an, an overview. Back here on the far side is where they had one of the bars. Over here on the left, they had an oyster station. I'll show you that close up later. These purple vertical displays were the 26 live auction items. The rest of the tables are all silent auction items, except for these two. These are raffles. We had um, one raffle, which was an unlimited buy raffle, and then we chose four winners. And then on the left-hand side was a best of live raffle, a variation of one, where the winning bidder got to choose the live auction item that they wanted. That was right before guests went into the tent. People would be out here bidding and eating the, the oysters and then kind of go in here and sit down. And there was music in there. So there was kind of this flow back and forth. Let's go ahead and kind of angle this to the left so we can see what's going on with the rest of the silent auction tent. The flat displays over here were propped up later. These were only horizontal at this point because it was windy. So in the end, they looked like these round tables, which are nice. It's easy with a round table to have good flow of your guests. You can see we've got wooden poles here for the tents. This is important because... If you have a storm, you don't want a steel pole, which is a great lightning rod. <laughs> so they have uh, they have wooden poles here. Let's zoom in on one of these these tables just to show that to you. Great displays. Look at these nice displays. It's large font, easy to read. I can see from way back here that 301 is where you're going to get to go ride in a parade on the float for the pest company best management company, and you're getting two gift cards as well to a restaurant. And that's from way back here. Great font. And what I also like, if we zoom in, we can see that the graphics are supportive of what's being sold. They had paper bid sheets. They were using a software management system. I can't recall who it was. I think I know, but I won't say it unless I verify it. And I'm not going to take the time to verify it. But they were using a software management system. So that was part of it. Uh, but we did use paper bid sheets at this event. Here's a couple of unique items, 100 gallons of propane for home delivery. I've never seen that in an auction before. What about this one, 100 gallons of home heating oil? I'll tell you, nor Northeastern winters are brutal, so the Islanders know this, and that's part of what makes it into their silent auction, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, now, when we turn to the live auction, which is what we're going to do next, there were three kind of core areas that, that when this auction was founded, they wanted their items to represent. And that was true, even like when Art Buckwald was very involved in this, he would tap his celebrity friends to make the donations and so forth. But they, they wanted the items to have an island feel, something tied to the island. 
Uh, they wanted the items to be unbuyable on the larger market and unique to their auction. You couldn't find it in other auctions, we'll say, on the island itself. So let's look at a couple of these live auction items and to give you a flavor, and you might be inspired by some of these as well. Here's the live auction displays. Again, there were 26 items. We have a lot of artists, writers, metal makers, photographers, um, illustrators, many on the islands. So a number of these items were tied to them. This one is not one of them, but it's one I'm going to feature. It's a private screening of your favorite movie. They had two theaters on the island. They were both restored to their magnificence in the last few years. So you got to take 150 people in. You got discounts for ice cream. You got to choose the movie you wanted to watch. It'd be kind of a fun birthday party, wouldn't it? 150 of your closest friends in there watching a movie of your choice. This is an interesting story, and it certainly fits the three criteria that they're looking for. You know, the island connection, unique to our auction, you um, and unbuyable on the larger market. I'll, I'll share the story with us. It is a gentleman, Dr. Kriegstein. He is a ophthalmologist, I believe, but he is a, a um, amateur paleontologist. He loves the study of dinosaurs. And a few years ago, he was in Tucson, Arizona, attending a, a dinosaur paleontology conference. There was a dealer there who had a full-size dinosaur skeleton still in the stone. Parts of it had been removed, so they could kind of tell what it was, but not completely. And they thought it was a juvenile T-Rex. And so he had proposition Dr. Kriegstein and said, you know, is this something you want to buy? And he thought, wow, this would be so cool. I could take this home. I could study it. Yeah, I'd love to have this in my living room. So he bought this huge block of stone paid two people in Utah who worked for a year chipping away at the matrix, which is what they call the stone surrounding the bones, chipping away at the matrix until this beautiful skeleton was revealed. And they really did think they had a, a, a juvenile T-Rex. Well, when they had a professional paleontologist look at it, he said, oh, no, this is not a juvenile. I can tell this is a full-sized uh, dinosaur. I just don't know the species. Well, come to find out it was a brand new species that hadn't yet been discovered. So uh, Dr. Kriegstini's wife suggested that they name the species after his parents. So it was called the Raptor Rex Kriegstini. <clears throat> I think that I got that story right. I, you can go find it uh, online, I'm sure, if, if, if I'm wrong on that. But that's kind of the, the gist of it. So this head that you see here was uh, what, you know, modelers, they're not called taxidermists, I don't know what they're called, but they create the head of the dinosaur based on the skeleton. Um, he donated his full-size skeleton to a museum so it could be further studied, uh, but, uh, but he has this as an example of what his dinosaur would have looked like back in that, in the day, and what he and his wife were donating was dinner at his house. You got to see another skeleton that he had, not, not the one that was named after him, but another one. And then everybody there was going to go home with a fragment of a dinosaur egg, which is pretty cool. Especially like if you're a Game of Thrones fans, it's sort of like a, a dragon egg a little bit in that, in that medieval thinking. So anyway, that's what that was being donated there. It's unique to the island. It's unviable. You know, it meets the criteria. It's not going to appeal to a broad section. Not everybody's interested in dinosaurs, but he's sharing his passion and it's unique. You know, there was some creativity behind this. Final item I'll zero in on here was a Bad Martha is a brewery on the island. They were going to name a beer after you or someone you wanted to have it named after. And every time you go into the brewery, you get to have free pints of your beer of a neat item that you could use to honor someone or <laughs> honor yourself. Now, I did say, you know, Art Buckwald was, was um, the host for many years for this auction, and he leaned on a lot of celebrities. And there are still celebrities involved in this auction as well, making donations. Um, Seth Meyers made a really generous donation to this auction. Um, Peter Simon, who is one of the four siblings of the Simon clan, like Simon and Schuster, uh, well, his the most famous would be Carly Simon, but Peter Simon is a well-known photographer. Um, excellent work. He, he's got another sister who writes musical scores for Broadway, um, Broadway musicals. So, so the whole family has been really talented. So Peter Simon made a wonderful donation, not only 
just um, of, of spending time with him, um, but he's even donating proceeds of a recent book that he published to Martha's Vineyard Community Services. So we were able to announce what he'd raised thus far since just May from selling his book as well. The Ferelli brothers, the directors, Peter Ferelli, one half of the Ferelli brothers had made a, a donation. It was part of a larger, um, larger package that was being sold there. Tony Shaloub who was the actor who played Monk and won some Emmys for that. He was part of that donation. Alan Dershowitz, uh, attorney to the stars and to sports figures, he's part of that donation. So there were a number of other people that were making donations as well as part of this this large live auction that were coming in and supporting the, the nonprofit in that way. Here is the oyster bar. For those of you that love oysters, you can salivate. Here is where the live auction was held. And I'm going to take this around. We had a, There was a band during the silent auction. We had the band up there performing. But if we look at this angle, you can see here's the stage, a bit of a runway for me, but it's not I'm slightly elevated, not, not a huge stage. And then the first couple of rows here, if you look carefully, you'll see tent cards, VIPs, and some sponsors at assigned seating. The rest of the time, it was completely open seating for the crowd. For those of you that are florists, you'll like the centerpieces. There's not a lot of them at this event. It's not that type of an auction, uh, but they were pretty. And so I took a couple of shots. And I'll just close here with another shot of the logo. I was very proud of the fact that I bought that dress 10 years ago in Key West. I've not worn it to an auction because it's too casual for an auction. But look, at this. is this not a perfect match that color it even looks like a sail in my dress if I would have had this salmon colored in the dress it would have been like really perfect but I was pretty proud of the fact that it matched and it was totally totally just a, the, it just happened that way so that was kind of fun so that's that's the possible dreams auction or at least part of it I wanted this video will go on for an hour if I let it so I need to cut, curtail it a bit um I'm hoping, though, that you got some ideas out of this. And here's some other suggestions I want to give you. Um, first, if, if you're finding yourself struggling, I've got a lot of content in my blog, redappleauctions.com. You can probably get some good ideas there that you haven't thought of before that'll help to start to turn your event around. Um, then secondarily, if you're at that point where you've made some changes and now you're still at a standstill and you're like, okay, now is really the time we got to change our game. Hey, pick up the phone and give me a call. <clears throat> you can find our numbers at redappleauctions.com. We're here to support you. Thank you for your time today and good luck to you in your fundraising auction. Bye-bye.